Hey guys, this is Matt and Sarah from Amateur Filmies, and welcome to another review where we'll be covering the new supernatural horror, Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island is a modern adaptation of a television series of the same name from the 70s and 80s, where a group of strangers are brought together when they win a trip to the island. The island promises to fulfill any fantasy that they desire. However, events begin to unfold when the characters realise that fulfilling their fantasy may come at a cost they hadn't previously considered. I was really excited for it, especially the concept, like I thought you could do so much with it. The trailer, you know, I was I was drawn in, you know, I couldn't wait to see what the, what the big reveal was. Mm. So first off, I appreciate how the film didn't waste any time. It set up the plot, set up the characters, set up the island quite nicely, had a bit, a bit of exposition, but it didn't waste any time sort of like lagging. And we got straight into it, and the thing I loved about it was that it, from, from like straight off the bat, it created that feeling of dread, because all the characters were having a good time, but you knew in like the back of your mind that something was going to go wrong. Not just because it's a Blumhouse production. <laughs> yeah, of course. The film did take quite a nosedive from there. Pretty quickly, yeah. The idea is that each guest gets to live out their one fantasy. However, given that the film focuses on five main characters, we are constantly shifting between the perspectives of all five of them as they are living out their fantasies individually and not as a group. Given that the film constantly changes between characters' viewpoints, I think it's really important that each guest is characterized very strongly as we're supposed to be invested in them at the time that they're being shown on screen. The characterization in this film is unfortunately quite weak. Basically, the fantasies are designed in such a way that they stem from the character's past experiences and traumas, and the film does attempt to flesh this out so that it has more of an emotional impact with the viewer. However, the film struggles to do this in a meaningful, well-written way, and it ends up leaving a lot of the backstories that they try to cover feel very surface level and brushed over, and it also leaves certain reveals in the film to feel very underwhelming and sometimes actually quite confusing. There were definitely scenes in the movie that were supposed to be quite impactful and emotional, but because that character development wasn't there, you just didn't care. It was like, oh, okay guess that Ooh. happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah the characterization was so bad that michael rooker's character who's sort of like this creepy man in the woods really just served as a vehicle for exposition just for the characters to be drawn towards the right path and that was it in terms of performances i think lucy hale gave it a good crack but maggie q's performance was probably the best her backstory sort of felt the most believable and she carried a lot of like emotional weight with her and i could feel that within the film unlike the other characters a lot of the comedic relief came from these two brothers who were supposed to be all chilled and laid back, high-fiving, but a lot of their jokes seemed like they were written by 14-year-olds and it just felt so flat. Yeah, definitely. Very cringe. <laughs> Michael Pena plays the person who runs the island and is the antagonist of the film. And when a film humanises a villain, that usually makes him a lot more compelling and there is an attempt by the film to do this for Michael Pena's character, but unfortunately it's not very convincing at all. I think Michael Pena has established himself as a decent actor, like he's done plenty of things in Hollywood, but him along with some of the other more established actors as well, like Lucy Hale and Maggie Q as we mentioned, there's only so much that they can do with a script like this. As we mentioned before, the characters get one fantasy that they can fulfill, but the fantasy has to be seen through to the end, even if it ends negatively. Seems quite simple, right? No. <laughs> because of the film brings about all these laws and these questions and all these conditions to the fantasy that by the end of it you're left with more questions than they've answered and it just it just adds to the confusion of the film and it just makes it completely unfocused despite all of the characters living out their own fantasies individually the film feels like it needs to interrelate them all and make them come together to form one big overarching plot point at the very end which we won't spoil of course but unfortunately, it just felt like it was a bit too ambitious and it ended up being anticlimactic to the point that it re just relied too heavily on poorly executed twists and developments in an already confusing plot. They were really grasping at straws to make everything fit. <laughs> yeah, it, as I said before, it was very ambitious and I think the film would have benefited from not being as complex and just some, telling something a bit more straightforward because it just ended up feeling very, very convoluted in the end. Absolutely. I personally think the film would have benefited from retaining some type of mystique by not feeling like it needed to reveal everything about the island and why the island is the way it is, why each character is doing what they're doing. I just feel like it's trying to tackle way too many things. And I think if it just sort of backed up a little bit and just said, let's just tell 
a regular horror story. Let's not try and overthink it and just tell it. I think we would have gotten something a little bit more enjoyable than what we did. I'm just not sure why the film felt like it really had to rely on just terribly written dialogue that was served no other purpose than just exposition and just introducing all these unnecessary plot points that, as I said, ended up convoluting the plot beyond what it really should have. I feel like in that way it insults our intelligence as viewers because it doesn't expect us to be able to be capable of picking up on those little nuances and it feels like it has to over explain. If you're out with your friends and you're not really into horror and you want to go see this, I probably think it would be alright. It is quite an easy going film, it's very very light on the horror unfortunately because I was sort of going into it expecting something a little bit more scary than what we got. But it, as I said, it's, bit, it's easy going, it's light, so I guess it's passable if you just want to watch something you know, with nothing else to do, but I definitely cannot recommend it. <laughs> so Maddie, what rating would you give Fantasy Island? Look, we did end up roasting this movie in, <laughs> in, a, in a big, big way. It's definitely not the most offensive movie out there. I just think that there are, you can pretty much choose from anything else and it's probably going to be a little bit better than this. I don't regret watching it, but I don't see myself watching this again anytime soon, that's for sure. I think if I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it a D. What rating do you think you'd give it? Oh, um, given I went into it with high hopes and low expectations, I'd probably give it a D+. Thank you very much for watching our review. We do plan on doing a few more in the future. This has been an amateur filmies review. Thank <laughs> you very much for watching. Thank you.